Hey team, welcome back to my podcast. Today I'm growing. I'm really excited to have you here for another episode. And today with, I would say, a tricky topic. Like it's pretty hard to talk about, but I thought it would be really, really cool to share more about my body image journey. I want to talk about, in general, bodies, body image, body insecurities, struggles that we all have, and that's today's topic. I'm recording for the first time ever today here out of my bedroom. I hope the audio quality and sound quality is amazing and I can always record here because it's pretty comfortable. I make myself some drinks. If you are also sitting somewhere right now, make sure you have a drink, make sure you're comfortable. Or maybe you're out for a walk or maybe you're in the car right now. I don't know, but make yourself as comfortable as possible and I hope you enjoy today's episode. Guys, I wonder when it all starts with our body image issues or insecurities. I mean, when I think back as a kid, little Anna, she had no problem with her body. Not at all. Like she was just happy the way she was. She was happy that she was able to run around and play with other kids. I really had no body insecurities. I'm thinking back when it all started and I think the first time ever that I've experienced something like body image issues or just insecurities had been in school. I would say when I was like 12, 13 or 14 years old. I think the first time ever that I really started to struggle was when I got a comment, a comment about my body. And I think it was about my hips. It was about my hips or my, um, I don't know the English word right now, detailer, detailer, detailer. Um, what's detailer in English? Just the thing about your hips, like your, your waistline. That's what I mean. Um, so I got a comment about this and it really, really affected me. And then when it comes to comments, also comments that other girls got really affected me. For example, we had this one hot girl in school and she got so many nice comments, especially from boys. She was pretty skinny and slim, I would say, but she still had nice boobs and she had a nice ass. So she got all these nice comments from all the boys and back then when I was just like 14 or maybe 15, 16, I just also wanted to be this hot girl and I also wanted to be, yeah, just part of the hot girl group. So I think everyone here can relate if you want to be part of the hot girl group or the, you want to be part of the cool kids. and. I'm thinking, why is it so important for us? And I think everyone just wants, no matter if it's like girls or boys, everyone wants to be, or everyone seeks for validation and everyone wants to be part of it, wants to fit in and yeah, just wants to be loved and get nice comments. I really had this this pressure back then to fit in and I still think today like when I talk about body image issues and later on I want to give you some tips but I want to let you know that I still haven't figured it out yet so when I say oh my god back then I struggled with my body I still do sometimes and I still have some insecurities and when I was younger and I was seeking for validation I think I'm still seeking for validation right now and yeah I'm just still trying to figure everything out that's definitely not something I have 100% figured out myself yet but I'm on my journey and I'm getting better and this is what we all try here and try here on this podcast it's all a lifelong journey and I want to learn here with you and by learning we are growing so yeah, I still haven't figured it out myself yet. So comments from others definitely can lead to body image issues. At least for me, this had been. I did a little bit of research for this topic and I checked out what are other factors that can cause body image issues. And next to comments from others, it can also just be the influence of others. Today, of course, can be online. So the influence 
from social media, I think is huge, but not just social media. It's also just in general, everything that's on the internet, just media, also like on TV, what you see on TV, it can have such a big influence on you. And we're going to talk about social media a little bit later, but I, I don't think social media is a bad place. And I'm a content creator myself. I spend so much time on social media and I produce so much content for social media. So I want to have people on social media watching my content. But while I think it can be a great place to get inspiration and motivation and so many other great things. I mean, you can definitely learn from social media. I don't know how many things I've learned already from TikTok, <laughs> but you have to be really careful, guys. Um, spending too much time on social media or following the wrong people, looking at the wrong content and comparing yourself to, to others, it can be really harmful, especially online, especially on social media. And I love to sometimes... Um, compare it to when I was younger I had like 30 other kids and let's say 15 of them had been girls so I had 15 other girls in my classroom that I could compare myself to but nowadays you have maybe 15 other girls in your classroom plus one million other girls on social media so today I think for kids it's a bit harder when it comes to yeah, just comparing yourself to others. And comparing yourself is one of the most dangerous things when it comes to body image issues. And one thing, guys, like when you compare yourself to someone online, that is so, so dangerous because we all know it. Like images are photoshopped. Um, even videos nowadays are video shopped. So you just don't know the reality and you compare yourself to something so unrealistic. But not just the online world. I think you can also compare yourself to the offline world. As I just said, me back then in school, there also had been 15 other girls that I was comparing myself to. Or I just saw someone, maybe just walking on the street or when I was shopping and then I thought to myself, oh, wow, she has such a nice body. I wish I would have her body or I wish I would have her life. Her life looks so much better. Her body looks so much better. But guys, you never know the full story. If you think that one person has it all and this person is perfect, you never know the full story. You never know what this person is going through or what this person has to do every single day to look a certain way. So you never know the full story and you should always remember that. I need a quick coffee sip break. So whenever you hear a background noise like this, these are my ice cubes because I'm drinking iced coffee, iced caramel coffee it's like a caramel sweetener without sugar it's super super yummy with some coconut milk and coffee and i'm gonna have a sip now mm, it's pretty late and i try to avoid coffee so late but today i thought i want to make it as comfy as possible when i talk with you guys so i made this amazing coffee so we talked about the main problems that can cause body image issues i said comments from others, I talked about social media and I talked about just comparing yourself in general, also in the offline world, comparing yourself to others. There is one more thing when I reflect on every single time when I struggled with body image issues, the body itself, like my body never had been the main problem. It always had been a different problem, like something coming more from the inside. And maybe, maybe you can relate, but I want to talk about one thing that really, really affected me and my body. And first of all, it's just, again, comments, like comments from special people. And to me, it had been um, my family, especially my dad. And first of all, like the comment he always made or the comments he always made had been about oh my god back then Germany's next top model had been such a big thing and I saw him we were watching it together and I saw him looking at those models and he just made those type of comments that really affected me 
um, when he was just pointing out to one or two girls and he was just like, oh my God, they look so good. They are so perfect. And now reflecting on that, I think that really, really affected me. When I was younger, I didn't spend so much time with my dad. I definitely spent more time with my mom. Even when they had been together, I always spent more time with my mom. She was always taking care. My dad was always at work, which I can understand. I'm also such a workaholic and I love to work and put work on the first priority list. I definitely have that from him. But I see also that me as his child, I was always seeking his validation. And especially when he made those comments, I think it really triggered me. That's kind of like why Germany's Next Top Model maybe had such a crazy impact on me. Because he made these comments and I was like, yeah, but I want to look like that. So maybe my dad thinks that I have the perfect body and maybe he loves me more for that. Maybe that's what I thought when I was younger. But I still have that problem, as I just said before, I'm really seeking for validation for everything what I do. Also, when it comes to work right now, like I always put in 110%, 120%. And if I don't get the validation from others, I put in 150% and even more and more and more. And I think it all comes back to seeking for validation and maybe a lot from my dad and he was just not able to give it to me and still to that day unfortunately right now at the moment we are not in contact we're not talking to each other I think that really affected me and I think that this still has an impact on me team that was really personal and I know it's something really intense to share but that's something I really wanted to do here on this podcast open up a little bit more about my childhood, about my family and about my thoughts and feelings. And that's what this podcast is for. By talking to you guys, it really, really helps me. That helps me to just work through a lot of feelings. And I highly recommend for you guys as well, if there's anything on your mind, feel free to talk to someone. You can also DM me, but it would be even better to talk to someone. And if you don't have someone, feel free to reach out to a professional. Um, you can also talk to a therapist. I think that's also a great, great way and I highly recommend that. Today I have not so many bad body image days, I would say. It's definitely gotten so much better than it was like years ago. But I still have bad body image days. I do and I'm sure you also have. So I thought I'd give you some tips or like tricks what I do when I have a really bad body image day. And I have like three scenarios. Maybe you can relate to any of these scenarios. But the first scenario is I'm on my phone. I'm on social media and I just wanted to spend 20 minutes here. But now I end up being an hour here and I'm scrolling through and I see all those beautiful and perfect people. And yeah, I start to feel bad in my own body. So what I do and what my advice for you is, if you know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about this scenario, is put your phone away. You really have to get up, put your phone away, go offline and do something else. And there are so many other great things that you can do. Mm, you can go outside for a walk and listen to a podcast. You can mm, read something. You can journal you can make a vision board. There are so many great things that you can do with friends or your family or also alone. Like I live by myself here in Berlin right now and I do have some friends here um, that I can call and we can go for a walk, for example. But sometimes I also just want to be by myself and there are also so many great things that you can do by yourself. I love, for example, yeah, I love to read and journal, but not in my apartment, I just love to go to a nice and cute cafe and just sit there and write down all my thoughts and feelings. The second scenario is you compare yourself to someone offline, like at work or in school or hmm, could be anywhere. But let's say at work or in school, someone made a presentation and they totally nailed it and they look amazing and they get all this nice feedback and you just think as I said before you just think oh my god I wish I would be like her or I wish I would be like him 
I wish I would have done it. Exactly, like this person. Um, I want you to remember that, as I said before, you never know the full story. So don't compare yourself to anyone. The only person you can compare yourself to is the person you had been yesterday. So you versus you. And I really, really want you to remember that every single day. The last scenario, guys, is when you look in the mirror and you just see all the things that aren't good enough and you think I wish my legs would look different I wish my arms would be leaner I wish I would have abs I wish I would have a round nice beauty I wish I would be skinnier all the negative thoughts and all the negative emotions that you have when you look into the mirror and this is a tricky one because I did my research before and I saw a lot of tips like just tell yourself that you are good the way you are and tell yourself all the positive things about your body but damn this is so damn hard and when you have a bad body image day and you look into the mirror the last thing that you're thinking is I love my body (laughs) you don't so this is a really tricky one and hard one and I think when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, first of all, don't be so hard on yourself and don't judge yourself. Also, don't judge yourself that you're thinking this way right now. Just accept everything the way it is. And then I talked about this thing before. There's most of the time something else going on, something coming from the inside, like a deeper reason why you really, really hate your body right now so maybe take some time to reflect on yourself what's going on today or what's going on in your life why do you think this way really take your time and what always helps me is like to journal my thoughts and feelings down talk to someone journal if you feel like you don't have anyone around you Feel free to talk to a therapist. And this takes a lot of courage, talking to a therapist. I haven't done it yet. (laughs) So I just give you the tip and advice, but I really want to do it myself. But I think it can be really, really helpful. And I've heard so many success stories. So talking to someone definitely helps. Uh, One thing that I think is so important to talk about right now, um, because it's especially when, yeah, to me it happened. And I think... um, So many of you also have experienced thoughts like this or just can relate, especially when I looked into the mirror and I didn't like what I see, let's say my abs again, like I really focused so much in them and I thought I just have too much fat and my belly isn't okay the way it is. Um, So I started to develop especially on those days, on those bad body image days, really bad eating behaviors. And I started to struggle with food. So I I thought I'm not lean enough. So the first thought I had was, okay, so I'm going to skip breakfast or, okay, so I'm not going to eat any carbs today. I think that's so, so harmful and it's so dangerous And the only thing you do is, first of all, you stress your body and your mind with those negative thoughts about your body. And then you put extra stress on your body with negative thoughts about food. And you start to restrict and you start to not eat enough. Or on the opposite, it can also go into a direction of overeating and you start to binge eat because of all these negative um thoughts and feelings so I think it's really important to mention here that especially on bad body image days you have to be a bit careful with food and remember that food is necessary it's as necessary as water and as air we can't live without food food is fuel and it's something it's something good and amazing and great for our beautiful bodies there's one reminder that always helped me not just on bad body image days but it's guys imagine you are like 80 or 90 years old and you think back of your life everything that you've experienced all the adventures you experienced and how do you want to look back at your life 
Do you want to think back like, yeah, I struggled a lot with my body and I hated my body. And every single day I did a lot of exercise and I did all these diets and whatever. Do you want to look back on a life like this? Or do you want to look back at a life of like, oh yeah, I loved my body and I loved my life and I appreciated my body for all the things that I could do with it. Like, how do you want to look back at your life? Just put that reminder into your head. It helped me so many times with so many thoughts and so many decisions. And I hope this reminder sometimes helps you as well. The last thing that I want to cover here in this podcast episode is body image in the fitness bubble, in the fitness industry. When I started social media and my YouTube channel, um, my main focus and main topic always had been fitness. And I myself had been so much into this fitness world. And I'm still in, like I'm still a fitness creator. I'm still an online coach. I'm still into it. But The way I look at it is so different than it had been a few years ago. Like a few years ago, there had been nothing else in my world. I was wearing workout clothes every single day, every single minute of my life. I just went to training. So I just did my workouts. I just focused on getting my steps in and I focused on the right nutrition, sleep. That's it. I did nothing else. It was my main, main, main focus. And today it's all a bit more relaxed, <laughs> to be honest. I have other priorities. I have other things I focus on. Work, for example, is one of the biggest things. And fitness to me right now is more like a tool to have energy, to feel my best, to um, be able to do all the things that I want to do and have enough strength and endurance. But yeah, body image in fitness industry, damn. Now looking back and still looking at the fitness industry, I think people in the fitness bubble have a lot of body image issues because first of all, the body image goals of the fitness industry, let's talk about that for a second. And that's not just for women. It's what I realized. It's also really crazy for men. And the more men I talk about this topic, the more I realize, oh, wow, men also really struggle with body image issues, especially in the fitness bubble. Because the perfect body in the fitness world is just so unrealistic, not just online, also offline. We look at people that are extra lean, that have an incredible six pack and men, like they look at other men with big arms and not even a six pack is enough. Some of them just show off their eight packs. Like It's just so unrealistic. And I also have to say it's so unhealthy. You never know what a body goes through if it's that lean. And what I've noticed for women, it's dangerous. If you're so lean and if you have a six pack 24-7, that can be really dangerous and it can just mess up your hormones and you have to be really, really careful. And then talking about fitness, not just about fitness, body goals, but also when I started to struggle with my body and when I developed the first body image issues, I thought fitness is going to help me out. I thought exercising and eating a certain way following a certain diet it can help me I thought it will change my body um, it will change the way I look and I still think yes it can fitness definitely can change the way you look which can make you feel happier more confident more successful um, but I think First of all, fitness, if you do it for the wrong reasons and you do it the wrong way, in an obsessive way, let's say you hate your body so much, so you start to exercise way too much and you try way too hard and you don't listen to your body anymore, you just exercise way too much, you eat not enough because you really, really so hard want to lose weight. Um... So then it can get really into the wrong direction. So you have to be careful. You can use fitness 
to develop a better body image, but you have to be careful and do it the right way. Team, changing your body is great and it can help you to develop a better body image, but it has to come more from within. I wrote this sentence, happiness is coming from within and that really, really is true. Happiness and love, loving your body, it really, really comes from within and that's such a wonderful sentence to end this podcast episode. I think there are still some things that I've missed, but I also think we've covered a lot. And by sharing all these experiences, sharing my journey, I really hope it helps you to not feel alone with this topic. I really hope it helps you to set yourself some reminders um, and to, uh, yeah, just work through this process of starting to love your body a little bit more and just moving on on this journey. And it's a lifelong journey. It will always be there. There will always be bad body image days. It's just, we're just getting better. We're just learning. We're just growing. And we get better at accepting it and just loving everything the way it is. Team, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Let me know what you thought of it. Give me some feedback, send it over to me on Instagram at Growing Ananas. And then I cannot wait to talk to you soon for the next episode. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, and talk to you soon. Bye.